here with Lisa Wong, live at AmpConf, product manager for AMP. And you've been talking about e-commerce and AMP, how AMP can be used for e-commerce application everywhere on mobile and desktop. Yeah, definitely. So I think that with the launch of AMP Bind, we really now believe that AMP is ready for all of the verticals in e-commerce. And in the last year, that's what we've really seen is that many different companies across verticals across the world have adopted AMP and really seen huge success with it, right? Because the, the fundamental theory is that if you put your content in front of your users more quickly, they're more likely to engage with you and hopefully buy something from you. And I think we have stats to prove that. So 53% of users will leave a site after three seconds of loading. In e-commerce, 79% of users won't come back to a site that was poorly performing. So if they had trouble browsing through things, if they had trouble buying something, they might buy that one time, but then they won't come back. Um, are there points where you should maybe use AMP at a certain point in your site and not use AMP somewhere else on your site? We believe that you can use AMP for the full conversion funnel for your full site, and we've really seen that, right? So AliExpress is one of the biggest e-commerce sites in the world, and they've gone all in on AMP. So they're building all of their site in AMP, and they've seen a more than 40% decrease in page load times, and they've seen over 4% increase in conversions. And so that amount of speed that you're going to get on every step of the flow is huge. So I'm told I can now build my site with AMP for desktop and for mobile? Yes, and we actually have on ampstart.com a whole component system where you could just take pieces that are interactive. So you could use the sidebar menu component for that full functionality on both mobile and desktop. And then we also have full templates for e-commerce, blogs. Uh, we have a restaurant template and even a gallery template with like really cool interactive experiences. And you were saying there's now a date picker module of some sort. Yeah, so the date picker is really awesome because formerly you had to essentially use different form elements and combinations, but this has just like any other date picker you would see on like a booking site for travel, say uh, it has even visual design baked into the default so that you don't have to custom style if you don't want to, but you totally can. And you were saying there's a Lightbox gallery now. What is that? Yeah, that's a really cool feature that we just launched where it enables any image on the page to show up in this Lightbox fully immersive experience, again, both on desktop and mobile and any other device size. And then users can actually page through those images uh, as you would a gallery. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot, Abby. Thank you, Ben. Thanks to components like AMP Bind and AMP List, our AMP pages have feature parity with their canonical counterparts. Uh, they look and feel and function exactly the same, except for they're just much, much faster. So AMP has been really useful for you guys, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, we consistently see improved click-through rate from search. We consistently see improved performance, which yields lower balance rates and higher engagements and higher conversion rates throughout the purchasing funnel. And we're now finally seeing Desk, our mobile sites that rival the desktop site in terms of conversion rates. Our progressive web AMP sites are incredibly fast. They use features like payment requests and add to home screen for re-engagement, uh, offline access through service worker. These websites are finally converting at a higher rate. They're easier to use, they're faster to use. Yeah. People will stay yeah. on those for longer. Absolutely. And we knew we wanted to offer AMP to our users, so we figured why not just go all in and it kind of eliminated framework choice overload for us. We knew we wanted AMP, so we just went full steam ahead. Being within AMP really helped us, you know, stay on the right track. You know what I mean? We had these this ecosystem and these, you know, requirements we knew we had to like follow to be AMP valid. So this was a really great, you know, track for us to be on to make sure no matter what new thing we added, we weren't gonna be adding a ton of CSS that's going to make the size of the page go super huge. So the restrictions of AMP really kept you guys honest and made you keep things simple and right. prevented feature creep. Exactly, yeah. And it was actually cool to contribute to the AMP open source, like in the case that we didn't have, you know, support for something. Like I had to add in print functionality, something super simple like that. I was able to actually contribute that, get that merged in and get it into production. So that was pretty cool too. So try it out is what we're saying. Yeah, we're saying try it out. If you have any feedback, if there are features that you want that we don't have, if there are bugs that you see, 
let us know on GitHub. We're more than happy to work with you. E-commerce is still, I think, in the early stages for AMP. And so as an e-commerce company, if you start working with AMP now, you really have this opportunity to shape the direction of what we're building and shape what comes next on our roadmap. And so we really encourage all the sites to take advantage of that. That sounds great. Well, thanks a lot, Lisa, for being here with us. Of course. All right. Thank you so much.